Good morning. It is actually not as cold as I thought it was going to be. It just hit 32 about, and uh, believe it or not, it was only like 35 when I went to sleep yesterday, but I was shivering. I was cold. It's kind of weird. The body's perception of the temperature is a lot different than what it really is. This morning I felt cold, but it's only 32. Water's not even frozen. But today, we are just going over Blood Mountain, and then we're going to head to Neil's Gap go into mountain crossings for a little bit, do some resupply, just look around the store because, you know, it's one of those iconic places, you know, the tree, everything. So I'm going to do all that and then my shuttle is going to pick me up and take me to an Airbnb. I'm going to stay there a night. It could be I'm just feeling the cold more because my body is just dead, <laughs> needs fat. I can tell I've been losing a lot of weight. It's only, today's day four? Day four. And like, I can tell my waist strap is tighter, my pants belt, I need to tighten more. I lost so much weight, probably because I've been eating 2,000 calories a day. And plus the hiking, plus the cold, I probably should have been taking at least, I know I should be taking a minimum three, but just not eating enough. I don't know. It's too cold to stop to eat. Just hard. So today we're going to go in and just work on videos and I hope to get into the Airbnb around 12:15 or so, not too late. I like to go early so I can have the whole day to just charge up and, and work, basically. And uh, that's how I prefer to handle my going into town days, is just do like four miles like today, and then go into town and get as much work done as I can. I'll sit in the lobby somewhere and just work, work, work. And then when I get the room, I can do everything else. But initially, I just have to work. And then uh, the next day at the Airbnb, they give breakfast. A true bread and breakfast, not Airbnb, a true bed and breakfast. But they are, they make breakfast and then they launch us off. So the next stop would be Franklin, and I don't know how many days. It's like 21 miles. You could, I could do it with one night. But I think I'm just going to do two so I can get to Franklin, or not Franklin, Helena. I can get to Helen, or Helena? Uh, Helen, really early. So I might do like eight miles the first day, 12, and then two, and then go into Helen. Just have a long day in town again. I'm not sure. Well, let's pack up and get going. This is my sprawl. This is how I take up a whole bunch of space. I don't know how you can... I was looking around. I think I can barely get four people in there. I'm taking up half the space already. <laughs> but I was here by myself. Heard some coyotes last night. And, uh, and God Hooks, they mentioned that there are some coyotes active around here. But I only heard them for maybe like 15 minutes and then that was it. Good shelter though. Every year there are reports and there are arguments about people using alcohol stoves and they don't care what other people think. But you'll actually see plenty of evidence of alcohol stove use on every, every shelter picnic table. See these round marks? It's because they got charred and over the years the char got flaked off. The thing with alcohol is if you spill it, you won't know that you spilled any until you see the table turning black because you can't see the flame at all, at least during any kind of bright times. So you will light it and then you'll see the table start turning black and then you'll notice it and then, <laughs> then you extinguish it. Here's a fresher one. Canister stoves, I don't know how you could possibly do something like that. These are all alcohol stove marks. When I use alcohol stoves, I put them on a rock or on the ground though. I never put it on a table, so I never, even thought that that would happen, but I mean, it's not going to happen to everyone, of course, if you're, if you're super careful about it, because after all, you're carrying an alcohol, you don't want to just waste it by spilling it everywhere. But if you're super careful, you can avoid it, but uh, accidents can happen, like setting your Hyperlite Versa or Repack on fire like I did. Anything can happen.
We made it up to the AT. There's a sign going off to the shelter. Now we just have four miles to mountain crossing. I think it's one and a half to the top of Blood Mountain and it's about 750 feet elevation gain. Most of it's constant because uh, believe it or not, Blood Mountain is the highest point on the AT in Georgia. So we're hitting that and after that it's all downhill until we get to North Carolina and then who knows, who knows where we're going. <laughs> it could be Clingman's Dome in North Carolina or is it in Tennessee? I lose track because it goes right along the border for so long. But off we go, Blood Mountain. Someone had mentioned it in another video before as well, but it's funny how we're blow going up Blood Mountain and there's Slaughter Creek Trail. It makes you think this mountain has a long, interesting history. I haven't looked it up though. I'll look it up as I edit, but the AT goes this way. Believe it or not, there's a little creek right here. And <laughs> look at these stairs. It's all ice. Is it micro spikes time yet? I don't think so because it's just here and there that's like this. Here it's only because there's a creek nearby, right at the top actually, and some of it's running down here. <laughs> it's super icy. Okay, time to put this camera away and be careful. I'm starting to see blue sky up there, meaning we're getting closer to the top. I don't see any shelters yet, so it could be over this little lump. But we're getting closer and closer. Thought I heard screams before. Thought they were hooting and hollering from people that hit the summit. But uh, I don't see anything right now. Check out this tree, it's a huge hollow. And Normally you'd have to stick a mirror or a stick in there or your head in there, but with the modern of anything up there? See anything? Can't wait to check it out. Another through hiking or general hiking tip for today is before you get to somewhere popular and you know the other route's gonna be even more popular, if you have to pee, pee on the not so popular side, there's nobody there. Because once you hit that summit, there's just gonna be a ton of people and the way down, there's gonna be people coming up, there's gonna be people going down, it's gonna be a madhouse. So no more peeing that way, so plan out your peas. <laughs> What's funny is, from the trail, you could see the privy, and there's the toilet part. At least there's a door. <laughs> Some of them, the doors don't really close well, but this one looks okay. If they opened up the other side, you get views like this. I don't know how well you'd be able to see here, but it's quite amazing. I'm sure the wind would blast in and stuff, but you get some pretty nice views from this one pretty. Here it is. This is my first glimpse of Blood Mountain Shelter. Have to just kind of get, get up some ice here. First glimpse ever in person. Wow. I have seen this in so many videos. I watch way too many YouTube vlogs and most everybody gets this far. And then we see the mountain and then eventually people taper off, but I have seen it so many times. Sorry for the sun causing such a dark building, but Whoa, and there's a big rock that everyone climbs up. Let's go inside. So the deal is you can camp in here with the bear canister. And during the winter months, you can just camp in here without. And there's an entire tent set up and an emergency blanket. Odd. Hello? Jacket, 
Lots of jackets. Hello? Interesting. Tent, food, little fire packets. I guess they had a fire in here. It even looks like the broom got caught on fire. I heard it's drafty up here because we're, we're so high and there are no windows. Wonder if they're enjoying the views or something because all their stuff is still here. Huh. Very messy. Pretty easy scramble up and now I'm at the top. And look at the views from up here. Wow. I have to say my view is way better than most other views I've seen on YouTube. Usually it's just clouded in. We could see quite far. It's just beautiful. What a beautiful morning. I'm actually thinking about setting up a time lapse and eat a little snack while I'm here. It's amazing. This is the kind of views that uh, you hope for when you start on AT. This is the kind of weather you hope for when you hit those views and I locked out. Locked out. I now have about two hours to get down to Neil Gap. It's 2.4 miles away, which isn't too bad distance wise, but I hear it's very steep and very icy because it's on the north side of the mountain. So I'm gonna take off just to get there early. That way I can go to mountain crossings and resupply and everything else I need to do before my shell gets here. Because I don't like to make people wait. So I'd rather get there early and sit around for a little while. I figure I could just loiter inside there and just kind of work on a video or something or copy some data around. Hikers can loiter, right? That's part of being a through hiker, right? So yeah, let's get going. It might take me a little while to come down because on the way up, I was all excited and I just scrambled right up. But I think on the way down, I have a full pack also. Most people don't come up here with a pack. They usually leave it down there. I don't like to leave my pack unattended just because of little rodents and bears. So I brought it all up here. So I'm going to have to scramble down with my trekking poles and everything like the silly person that I was. And then uh, I'm going to get going. We're not around them as much as we were. Right. So then you spread her down a yes. little bit more. Yes. Very much so. Yeah. Oh, so oh, dude. Oh. Are you Jay? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> How you doing? I just recorded you saying that. We're coming down off of Blood Mountain and we met a couple of hikers there, Angela and Julie. Hi. Hi, say hi to your husband. <laughs> but uh, look at this open area, just this hard rock. Someone camped there. Definitely need a freestanding tent here. But amazing. And there's a white blaze on the ground. That's what we're going to follow. Glad it's not all iced over. But just amazing views here and there. They're telling me how busy it gets once it's summertime. Even with all the crowds in the summer, at least on this trail, there's just viewpoints after viewpoints. And plenty of area where someone could just lay down and just enjoy. It's quite amazing. Wow. I'm glad I told her 12.30 instead of 12. That way I could just hang out like this. Oh, here's even a little fire way out. Probably someone burning leaves. But... Why would anybody want to quit after seeing this when they get to, to the bottom of the mountain? People always say that so many percent of peach, percentage of hikers quit at Neil's Gap, but I would think that people would be more pumped up to keep going. I think people would quit much sooner when it's not as like this, I guess. I don't know, it's just up and downs. But once you get here and you see this and you feel like once you get to the bottom, there's more and you want to keep going. So. I don't know about that stat.
Another amazing viewpoint. I still think if people are going to quit, they should quit at Woody Gap because that's a big parking lot, easy to access. But after this, motivation's got to be strong. I love balancing rocks. This one, I guess you could call it a balancing on just two points. They're tiny little points. Love balancing rocks. We are officially out of the Blood Mountain Wilderness here. On the opposite side of the sign, there's a trail going down and there's a building there. Could that be mountain crossings? I have no idea. It could be. Is that where the AT goes? It could be. I have no idea, but we'll find out. And that's part of the adventure. I, that's what I love about adventure overall is just not knowing. And then you get to see it for yourself. And it's still different from seeing it in videos and knowing. When you see it yourself, it's just, I don't know, it's the experience. More memorable than watching some dude <laughs> seeing it. I'm sure if you've watched other vloggers, you've seen this exact same view. The walk down to the road and then the hustle across the road because uh, traffic is fast. Line curves, there's a bunch of people over there. Traffic's really fast. All right, here we go. Let's go. I made it, made it. And here is the tree with all the shoes, boots. Of course, they're all low. Nobody went really crazy and tried to go as high as they could. But this is it. Neil Gap. And the AT actually goes in there. But we're going to go inside and get a resupply before our shuttle gets here. And I guess it's over here. Um, there's Marty over there. I'll have to figure out where the door is. There it is. Oh, we leave our packs outside. Okay. Here I am inside. We're going to resupply here. I just need a couple of nights. So I just need one more night and a bunch of day food, things like that. So in here, they've got all kinds of things. Over here, it's mostly clothes. Some things. Everyone's really friendly, of course. There's also a fire over here. Oh, a real wood-burning fire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ooh, gives you the goosebumps. They need those fans. And they got all kinds of socks. They have all kinds of peak foods. 35. And over here, they have the usual resupply. And all kinds of gear, different water filtrations, nice little droppers. I could have used that little one ounce bottle. Pretty much everything you need fuel canisters, trekking poles, extra batteries, all kinds of pack stuff. And this is where they do their shakedown. Are you guys doing a shakedown right now? Yeah. Oh. <laughs>
Hey there, I'm at the Your Home in the Woods Bed and Breakfast just north of Neil's Gap. I'm staying with Bonnie and I think Paul. Oh man, I can't remember the name. But I'm sharing a room with Marty here and uh, we just had lunch and I showered and all clean. So I plugged in a whole bunch of stuff and I'm about to get to work in the videos. I just wanted to check in and show you where we are. And pretty nice. Got this one and he's got the other one. And he's going through his resupply and everything. I haven't done that yet. I bought a bunch of stuff at Mountain Crossings. But uh, I hope I didn't overbuy because I was starving and I just threw some stuff in. But yeah, now it's time to get to work. It's so nice being out of the wind and the cold. What's crazy was last night I was shivering right before going to bed. And then I looked at my thermometer and it was only 35. And I, was, I felt like it was 20s. I think my body is just losing fat so quickly that just having trouble adjusting and I don't know, maybe it's just the uh, coldness wore off. I don't know. If it was 15 degrees again, I'd have been having a tough time, but I slept okay. I just need to stretch though. I can feel my back is sore. I haven't been stretching at all because as soon as I get to camp, I just want to get everything done and get in the quilt because it's warm. So stretching is so important. I have to do a lot of that today, but time for more work and then Marty said I can go through his resupply and see if there's anything I want in there and then get to work. If I don't talk to you all, I'll see you all tomorrow morning back at Mountain Crossings. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to show you what we're going to have for dinner. So I'll talk to you later. Here's all my clothes sitting on my pack. This is what I'll wear tomorrow morning when I leave. I'm not doing any laundry because I haven't been sweating at all. And not that dirty because everything's been mostly frozen. A little bit of mud, but there's all my stuff here. I actually am trying to figure out, this is my first in-home place or, you know, overnight place somewhere. So I'm trying to figure out my charging needs. I have to charge so much, soften batteries and everything. And here's my charger. I had to put a little pillow on a garbage can because my cables are so short and I couldn't reach the ground. Now I kind of regret not having the one foot extension cord that I had on the PCT because if, a, if an outlet is loose at all, it's just so nice having something that can reach so not everything's hanging. Although I don't think a foot would have worked in this case, but it's definitely nice having another. <laughs> yeah, my name is everywhere. And then I have a long cable going down below. Here's the living room. Yeah, it's obviously not the living room, it's the dining room, but there's a kitchen over there. And there's my coffee cup and water cup and cookies, fresh baked cookies. And they were so good, nice and soft. And uh, they have a coffee bar right here. I'm gonna have another one, just a half, I think. And yeah, they have this nice little patio, but it's a little too cold to sit out there right now, especially since I'm wearing shorts. And there seems like a face on a tree over there. Lots of birds, more birds when it's warmer probably. Nice.